This is my third time filming because my earring on this side fell out more than once in the previous filmings. I don't know if that means I better keep it short or what, but I'll try to keep my motion limited so my earring doesn't go flying across the room again. Anyway, welcome to Wednesday. It's Writer's Wednesday. I hope you all are doing well. I'm Tia. Today I'm discussing five books that changed my life. And I think, yes, I have four of them physically in my lap right now. And one of them is a digital book. I'll actually start with that one. But I'll get to that in a second. It's Wednesday. I hope you all are doing well. I hope your week has been fantastic. And if it hasn't, you have several days to change it and turn things around for the better. Remember, you deserve to treat yourself with all of the loving kindness. So if the week has not been that great, pour some extra love on yourself. You deserve it. So the first book for this writer slash reader Wednesday that absolutely changed my life is How to Meet the Rich by Jenny Sales. People, at least many Americans, kind of recoil at the thought of knowing and mingling with wealthy people because we as a society tend to dislike what we don't have. <laughs> and so those who are wealthy are minding their business and people who are not wealthy hate them. <laughs> you know, even if those wealthy people are by all accounts, normal, nice, pleasant or whatever, they tend to inspire a lot of a lot of hate. So this is a really good book for kind of exposing some of the structures that are in place for people in different social classes. You learn the layers of social class or class in general. You learn the layers of it, which is a little different from the interpretation that Paul Fussell had in his book, class. Jenny Sales's approach is a little bit different, but um, you learn the layers of class. You learn how to use these tools for professional purposes, romantic purposes, as well as social purposes. So whether you want to marry money or make your own money or just be in the social groups with money, befriend money, it doesn't matter. You can learn these basic skills in this book. It's an excellent reference for that. It's an excellent uh, peek into a world that many are not privy to. And it really makes it very easy to understand that Money is just one definer that separates perhaps one person from another, but there are so many other things that people can have in common and learning some of those things has been crucial in my journey because I'm a person who has a business. I want to know how to best appeal to my customer and my things are available for people at any price point, but higher um, net worth customers or higher net worth clients can and usually, in many cases, order more. They can order in bulk. <laughs> so knowing little things like that is helpful. And knowing how to be an appealing business to someone who has a lot of resources. It's very powerful information. So it's a great book, regardless of what your purposes may be. It's an excellent resource. Not a book for reading in one sitting. It has a lot of information. Having a notebook at your side is very good for it while you review it great book, can't recommend it enough. In a very similar vein is this book, which is What Would Jackie Do by Shelley Branch and Sue Calloway. By the way, all of these books will be listed in the description box. So this book about what would Jackie do, um, as you see in that upper corner, it has a little yuck in it because there was a sticker there. And that saddens me because I like my books to look fairly pristine. Anyway, um, this is a great book. Jackie Kennedy is, of course, um, she was married to John F. Kennedy, U.S. president. She became a widow during his presidency. And a lot of people only think of Jackie as the prim and proper first lady of the 1960s. She was so much more than that. And this book really dives into that and how she would, how she put her personal touch on her entire life and how we can incorporate some of those things because she is viewed as a classy and iconic woman. It is very interesting to see tidbits of her history mixed in with things that are very modern. 
she was by all accounts an excellent woman as far as excellence in every area of her life raising her children well supporting her spouse developing her own mind pursuing her own career interests a little later in life taking the initiative throughout her life uh, learning languages and having a curiosity about others being part of a very revolutionary presidency and being a critical component of that by all accounts so I love this book this is a good one if you especially if you are raising children um this is excellent it's good for adults too but it's great if you're raising children because this is a very practical way to infuse little bits of class and refinement into their experience with you or experience growing up so i would say oh it's great for girls Yes, but I think young men could benefit from these same tips. There are so many things in here that are truly gender non-specific that could absolutely up-level a person's quality of life. So great book, highly recommend it. The next book <laughs> is by Helen Gurley Brown. It is Sex and the Single Girl. How did this book change my life? Well, I was a single girl when I read it. And it was written originally, I do believe in the 19... Yeah, it was published originally in 1962. I got it in the early 2000s. I thought it was great because it was written in a very funny and conversational way. It's a great book for that. But also, it was written very practically. It was something that, or it was, it's a topic that makes it clear that the person at your side may be lovely, if you are married, it might be lovely, but being single is not the end of the world. And you can have an amazing experience as a single person. You have a lot, a lot of things to pour your interest and your resources into as a single person. You do not need to be married to have a rich and fulfilling life. So this was a great book. Um, as a divorcee, I realized yeah, I need to reread it because I'm single again. <laughs> but it was a great book. I read it so much that I could quote certain parts of it. It's a great book. Um, it's amazing how very modern it was for the time. It was very progressive. And some of the fashion advice in here and some of the dollar amounts that are listed for certain things, yeah, some of that is a little out of date. But the basic practicality is still there. And I love it. I love it. It's a great book. If I could recommend anything before marrying, read something like this, just to know how to develop your interior and exterior world before joining it with someone else. It can really help with giving you your own identity so that you come to a marriage not as um, one half of a thing, but a whole thing that is merging with hopefully another whole being and creating something new between the two of you. So love that book. The next book, actually, this is not, this is not the exact book. The exact book is in my office and I just didn't want to dig it out. This one was right at my fingertips, but any book by this author is fantastic. It is Start Late, Finish Rich by David Bach, as you can see. I read Smart Women Finish Rich. David Bach has a way of explaining finance that I find is just chef's kiss, just perfect. Very approachable way of explaining finance. Great practical examples, wonderful tips. And yeah, this book I started reading already. I'm going to finish it, but I did read Smart Women Finish Rich from cover to cover. I can't recommend his stuff enough and definitely get on his email list so that they can send you resources as they are available um, through David Bach's website. But he's a great author, great teacher of financial concepts. So if you are someone who is a little unfamiliar with finance, um, definitely check out his stuff. He, like I said, he has a way of explaining this that is absolutely fantastic, especially for beginners. And the final book, yay, I'm at about 10 minutes. You've, you've heard me mention this before. Write it down, make it happen by Dr. Henriette Ann Clouser. If you are anywhere in the realm of 
Law of Attraction, Manifesting, Conscious Creation, Co-Creation. If you're anywhere in that world, this is a book for you. It literally, from chapter, let's see, from chapter 2 to chapter 20, you are given different strategies for scripting. The different ways scripting shows up in your life and how it can play out. It is wonderful. It's conversational. It's very usable, very user-friendly. Some days I might be a little stuck, need to do some scripting. I just pick a chapter, read that, and do the kind of scripting that's advised if it resonates. And many times it does. Usually whatever chapter I pick is the one I need to <laughs> work on. Great book. Again, can't recommend it enough. Fantastic for you, even if you are skeptical of the law of assumption slash law of attraction slash co-creation slash, excuse me, conscious creation uh, topic. Even if you're skeptical of those, the focus that comes from writing a thing down is amazing. And your ability to kind of tune in your your whole mind to something when you see it in writing is something that can't be denied. So if you are looking to create some changes or to do some new things in your life, life, not lives, life, that is the book that you would want to check out for sure. It changed my life tremendously. Most of what I have created in my life consciously, I have done using the techniques in that book. So yes, those are the five books that changed my life. I would love to know the books that have changed you all's lives. If I don't respond immediately, have no fear. It's probably just because I'm out of town. But as soon as I get back, I'm checking all of my messages and I will see it and respond as soon as I am available. So please have a wonderful rest of your week. Wonderful day. Take care and I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.